Hello, everyone. Now we are going to start our presentation of the topic Chinese literature in the Song Dynasty. The first literature we are going to talk about is Li Qingzhao. Li Qingzhao is one of the greatest women point in the history of classical Chinese literature. She was born in an educated family. Her father was a renowned essayist and friend of Su Shi, also known as Su Tongpo. She learned from her parents much about classical Chinese literature as well as literary composition in adolescence. She married Zhao Mingcheng when she was 18 and collected many inscriptions and calligraphy with her husband. Amidst the tumult of foreign invasions by a nomadic nation called the Zhichen, which resulted in the overturn of the exceeding dynasty, both Li and her husband frequently fled from the Chaos, and Zhao eventually died after an arduous journey to Nanjing. Here are two renowned and well praised masterpieces of Li Qingzhao. The left one is Ru Mengli. The words express the feelings of the girl during bloom and fading, and shows the love of nature. The right one is Sheng Sheng Man, which is famous for the initial string of seven sets of duplicative words to show her melancholy. Li Qingzhao was regarded as a master of Wan Yue Cipai, also known as the Delicate School. The writing style was considered to be any critics to express a quiet, elegant, and restrained mood. These poems have this implicit and indirect quality. However, there are variations in her writing style because she lived through national and personal tragedy. Her poetry is clearly divided into the periods before and after her husband's death. Furthermore, she composed the most famous article on the theory of Tzu in the literature history. Which established the independent status of Si. As a woman in a feudal society, Li criticized the system of male authority. Therefore, she profoundly influenced the later Chinese classical literature and feminism. Li Qingzhao was fascinated by ancient art and artifacts. Her husband Zhao Mingcheng composed the Jin Shi Lu, one of the earliest catalogs and research monographs, with the help of Li. They applied a critical methodology in their research and corrected many mistakes and textual errors of received texts. After Zhao died in Nanjing, Li Qingzhao finished the Jin Shi Lu. In the piece, described the inscriptions and epitaphs from Xia to Tang Dynasty, which preserved many historical records. There are lots of previous research about Li Qingzhao's poems, but most of them focus on her literary talent as a female. However, just like Professor Ronald Ergon from Stanford University pointed out, that there were deep ambivalence in Song society about educating women, allowing women to write, and even if they did write, preserving or circulating what they produced, which makes so much sense as we can see that most of the scholars reason to her point the voice of a lovesick pining wife or a forlorn widow, just like Tian Ru has introduced in the previous part. This is also how Li Qingzhao was first introduced in the Chinese textbook to educate students. However, some of her work can be interpreted very differently. Today, we are going to look at Li Qingzhao's essay called "Rhapsody on Capture the Horse." This is an essay that introduced the rules and strategies of a gambling game. Although this piece of work received little attention by the researchers, its great influence cannot be neglected. It gives a unique perspective to understand Li Qingzhao's characteristics and lifestyle, and it also provides a good reference to understand the cultural activities in the Song Dynasty. Let's start by figuring out what is capture the horse. Basically, it is a military strategy board game that was very popular in the Song Dynasty. It is also said to be the early version of mahjong, which is a popular activity in nowadays China. I believe all of us understand the importance of horses in the Chinese history, as I have mentioned in the previous lectures. With that being said, capture the horse is not only a board game with a gambling nature, but it also requires its player to have a strategic mindset in order to master the game. Let's move on to the importance of Li Qingzhao's work. On the bottom left corner, we can see an extract of the work with the translation of it. We can see from this horse capturing scene that she was playing the game as if she were the commander in a battlefield. We can speculate that playing this game was a trend at that time, and this essay by Li Qingzhao had indeed played its role in promoting the game. 
The game was so popular that the government had to step in to control the society, which on the other hand implied the prosper of the gambling culture in the Song Dynasty. This work was written by Li Qingzhao after her life had become tough. There are scholars who challenge the conventional assumptions by saying that she wrote this essay with other political and military attempts. However, as a female poet, she never earned her place in politics, which also makes us to think about the gender criticism issue that lies behind. Let's move on to talk about another great literary in the Song Dynasty, Xin Qiji. After introducing the great poetess Li Qingzhao, we are going to talk about another famous literary, Xin Qiji, who was known as an outstanding poet, literator, and a military general. And we will mainly introduce him for the former two roles. As a poet, he had a profound impact on Zi, which is the kind of lyric created in Nan Dynasty and being prosperous in Song Dynasty. And what Xin Qiji wrote was called Xin Zi, which contributed to art a lot throughout the history. He also had achievement in calligraphy. As a military general, he experienced ups and downs in his official career. So first is the things about Xin Qiji and Zi. Xin Qiji was the representative poet of heroic Zi, which was exactly the opposite style of Li Qingzhao's. There are more than 600 Xin Zi existing now, and he is considered to be the poet with most poems in both Southern and Northern Song dynasties. The theme of the poems are mostly related to the realistic issues of the country and nation, expressing patriotic feelings. But why? Two main aspects are considered. For the political reason, when he was born, the North has been captured by the Jin conquerors and because of the scenes he witnessed, insults and pains were suffered by the Han people under the domination of Jin. He sympathized with the murdered Han compatriots and hated Jin people deeply, which made him pay lots of attention to the affairs of his own country. For the family reason, the ancestors of Xin Shiji and the Jin people have fields. Therefore, his father always kept the determination to fight the Jin conquerors to the death. Under the father's inculcation and his own experience, he gradually fostered a sense of love of his own country and also formed the ambition to restore the central plains to serve the country, which also laid the foundation for the content and style of his future lyrics bold and unconstrained. Next, we are going to talk about his impact on Si. In Xin Si, he further expanded the subject matter of the poetry by including politics, philosophy, feelings of friends, and so on in his poems. He also inherited Su Shi's bold and unconstrained style of poetry and the fighting tradition of patriotic poets in the early Southern Song Dynasty. The poems showed his grief and indignation of unrequited aspirations as well as condemns to those in power at that time. So whenever the country or nation was in crisis in later generations, many writers drew spiritual inspiration from Xin Zi and were motivated by them. So next is Xin Qiji's calligraphy legacy. This post of leaving the country is the only one existing ink calligraphy work of Xin Qiji in the world now and is now collected in the Palace Museum. We can see from the picture that the Chinese characters were written fluently and gracefully, showing no arrogant attitudes but the upright spirit. This work was once collected by Zhao Mengfu. So the talents and the unique life experience of Xin Qiji has bring about huge historical influence and also cultural influence. For historical influence, his spirit of patriotism in Si has greatly influenced many military generals in the following dynasty of China to fight against enemies. So for cultural influence, it includes inheritance and breakthrough. The first one is about the interpretation of Zi. Xin Qiji got rid of the traditional view that treats Shi as more important, dignified, and elegant than Zi. He proposed that Zi has the same literary function as Shi, and he also improved the literary status and artistic value of Zi. The second one is about the bold and unconstrained style, and here is some background information. The poetry in the early Song Dynasty basically inherited the atmosphere of elegance in the late Tang and Five Dynasties. Many well-known poets all inherited 
the predecessor style of Wan Yue, which means gracefulness and restraint in their poetry, and arbitrated by the aesthetic concept of elegance. Gracefulness is regarded as the authentic style of Ci, and it became the trend for Ci's production. Su Shi used his work to correct the style of the time. He consciously involved a large number of bold words in his poetry, in addition to the style of Wan Yue, to create a Hao Fang style. Xin Qiji has conscious and clear mind in writing poems to carry forward this style. Xin Qiji inherited and carried forward the bold and unconstrained style that was invented by Su Shi. He also regarded Si as a tool of writing that expresses his ambition, and he used words to express his origin and spiritual role. His poetry is considered as majestic, bold, and powerful. His bold and unconstrained style and patriotism play a very important role in the field of Ci and dominated the development of Ci in the Southern Song Dynasty. The third one is about the breakthrough of content. Xin Qiji further broke through the stereotype of Ci is loot that has existed since the late Tang and Five Dynasties. He created a precedent for writing patriotic poems that were passionate, tragic, and majestic. He used a lot of prose sentences to write poem, and almost all the content in his poems were expressed in prose style sentences. He transplanted the method of composition, discussion, and dialogue in the ancient literary works into Ci. The innovation of expression method has brought new changes in the context of Ci, and has greatly improved the literary status of Ci. Making Ci as one of the most important form of literary work of Chinese literature. And this is the end of our today's sharing. Thank you for listening.